Single player selected. And welcome back once again to the Outer Worlds where we are going to try and set up a mutual understanding between this guy here and the Iconoclast. In order to do that, we need to go speak to them. So let's go do that. How are you going to convince Graham like this. that the chick needs to be in charge? Like that. Oh, and, and maybe like that. And yeah. then, then the, the other days. You are an expert at the old diplomacy there, Pug. Good luck. Excuse me, going through the middle. Ugh, that was a tight squeeze. <laughs> Hello, you. Look how moody she looks to the other people. Anyway, let's see if we can convince her to work with them. Hey, Captain. Any thoughts on that errand we talked about? No. Oh, dearie mate. Am hey, I going to have to do it? Any <sighs> thoughts on that errand we talked about? In order to convince her to lead. Sounds like it could be good, Pug. All These right. people helping Appreciate each it. other instead of killing each code. other. If it works, bring back anything you find. Supplies are best, but information's good too. If someone was behind the Amber Heights massacre, it'd give a lot of people around here some closure to find out who and string them up. Good luck. Watch out for the taros. Watch out for potatoes. Welcome back. You find anything out there? What do you think? Not yet. Just sounds like another bug hunt, sir. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It really does. Maybe I could speak to Graham. And maybe that will source it. And Graham's up here, I think. Yeah, why not just give him a chat first before you do all Zora's missions? That's a good idea. The gunship. Have you secured its targeting module? Yes. At last. Now we must secure the Stellar Bay landing pad. We will fortify the city against the board's assault. Uh, I'm all for fighting the board and all, but... Oh, shit. Just don't shoot too many of my drinking buddies in there, all right? And you, Captain. Are you prepared? I don't suppose you could work with Sanja rather than against him. No. Our hearts have long since closed to one another. He is blinded by his love for bureaucracy. You're leaving me no choice. Time is of the essence, Captain. Be swift with your decision. No, we're, we're going to have to do some convincing with him. Well, how? Maybe after we do Zora's missions, we'll convince her to take over and there'll be a mutiny. See, I don't like these guys as much. Just... Ooh, we need those. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, but shoot. They'd be pissed. Maybe we went after I kill him. <laughs> I'd crawl up the stairs and sneak my hand around. <laughs> I bet you would. <laughs> Alright, maybe if we try her mission. And then, if that fails, then I'm just giving it to the other dude. Mm -hmm. How about them apples? That sounds good to me. What would be your uh, role in this universe, Pug? Uh, just lock myself away from all these maniacs. Somewhere nice and peaceful. Maybe on top of that mushroom chip pants. <laughs> and I could throw pebbles off the side at people. <laughs> I can hear scum in the distance. You sure that's not a pug snoring? <laughs> well, that's the most beautiful sound in the world, shit pants. <laughs> All right, let's enter the code. Okay, can we open the door now? But it was to the right there. Oh, I thought it was, this was a massive door. It's just this <laughs> little door here. Yeah. It's not as impressive. Oh, there's lots of notes. Actually, this is worth doing, just for all the ammo. Mm -hmm, nice mag picks, everything. Yeah, we'll just ignore the dead body on the floor, if it is dead. The sulfur smell on the planet covers up all the corpse smell. So what would you do in a world like this? What old would your profession be? Mm. I wouldn't be working for the board, let's just put it that way. Are you sure? You'd be like, um... What's her face? Don't tell me I'm like a corporate stooge suck-up. Actually, maybe you'd be more like uh, old uh, Nayoka. Uh-huh. Just screaming with a gun, shooting shooting bushes. 
If there's a world that exists and people are coming after us, yep, that's what I would do. Shoot a bush. <laughs> Just be like, you don't want none of this. Look what I <laughs> yeah, can do. Exactly. Okay, what happened there then? You got what you needed to. Oh, it we was did? an old data cartridge. You, you looted. Well, that was simple enough. Mm -hmm. And you got a little loots out of it? Yeah, that was worth it. Where the heck am I? Welcome back. You find anything out there? We yeah, did. I found a box of uh, data cartridges. Let's see. These are old. Looks like correspondences between the pirates. Some bits here, some there, some. Wait. This. This one's got the Amber Heights gate code on it, just like the one I found earlier. And here's a letter. Wait, this is from Graham. Oh, of all the... Captain, he gave them the gate codes. Oh, the dirty gates. I actually got goosebumps on my back from that. I don't know why. Because you are a ghost ship, <laughs> Uh... Graham isn't exactly known for his rationality. Watch it. That's our leader you're talking about. My friend. I know he's got his head in the clouds, but... I always believed there was a core of good there. What the hell happened to live and let live? I always figured Mr. Bryant for a man of character. In the end, though? He was just another name on a long list of frauds. Yeah. He had us all fooled. Now I've got to sort out how to break it to the rest of my people. Look, I need to think. Plan. Figure out if I should talk to him or shoot him. Or both. Just don't give him the module yet. Give me a little time. I'll meet you at his place. Hey, you got a minute? Yeah, sure. I'd, certainly for you, any time. I can't believe I wanted to shake his hand. I need a shower. Makes you wonder if being a treacherous, two-timing coward is some sort of contagious disease, or if he was just born that way. Uh, Never meet your heroes? No, that's not true. You should meet your heroes if you can. Of course. Uh, is this about Graham? I'm pretty sure it is. At first, I liked what Graham was doing. The iconoclasts were going to change Halcyon for the better. But then, we found out Graham was behind the slaughter of Amber Heights. How can anybody so morally bankrupt lead a movement to transform the colony? Graham's a piece of trash. That's putting it kindly, boss. Graham's worse than trash. He's a traitor. You'd never do something like that, would you? Slaughter a whole community of innocents? Depends on which side of the battle you're on. Pugman would do that, for sure, if it was enemy. <laughs> um, I'll just redirect the question. Graham wasn't the one who killed all those people, he just allowed it to happen. I'm sure Graham told himself the same thing. He wasn't the one who held the gun and pulled the trigger. All he did was turn a key. The thing is, that's all it takes. Sometimes the difference between right and wrong is turning a key, or looking the other way, or keeping your mouth shut when you ought to speak up. Let's get back to it. I need to put all this ugly business with Graham behind me. And hopefully we'll do that in a second. I guess we're going to all meet in Graham's quarters. I've got just a tell for it, people. You know what's pretty neat, Pug, is that your instincts um, about these people were correct. That you actually preferred the corporate man over these people. That... Yes, that is true, actually. Because mm, normally it would be... Ooh, bits. Oh, bits. pits. Mm. No, I can't do it here. <laughs> Normally, I would side with whoever's fighting the corporates and the suits, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. this guy's just a jerk. Oh, both of them are kind of jerkish, to be honest. Mm. Right, I mean, you need to have words. The gunship. Have you secured its targeting module? <gasps> don't don't say anything. Why not? Because she wants to get um sorted and uh, surprise them. 
All right. Well, she said to meet him here, right? No. Uh, said at Graham's place, I guess. But I'll have a word with her, right? Just to be sure. To make sure she's gonna hurry up. She's not like fixing her hair or something. Because <laughs> we've got business to take care of. Because there's a waypoint. It looks like you're doing nothing. Go take a walk, Captain. I'll find you once my head's on straight. Let me exit. Because we can actually sleep in this game and pass time. Oh. Maybe if I can find a uh, a bed somewhere. A sulfur smelly bed. <laughs> huh. Let's see if she's still there. And if she is, I'll find a bed and kip down. Yeah, and that tent. Oh, she's gone. Ooh. Which means we can loot. I know she. Lo it looks like she doesn't have much. And or I've already looted it. You've already looted it. I remember, it's like you were taking their medical supplies. Don't say it like you wouldn't do it as well, Chip Captain. Pets. We should chat. Graham's got the right idea, but he isn't the right guy to execute it. I don't even think he's motivated by philosophism anymore. I think he's just guilt-ridden. I can't believe I'm even saying this, but I keep going over and over it in my head. And the only way I see the Iconoclast surviving is we depose him. I thought she said dispose. <laughs> yeah, and you, you'd run it in his stead? Yeah. Hell, most of our people listen to me already. Good. Good. Um... Yep, yeah, fair enough. I'm going to confront him. <laughs> Can I count on your support? Let's do it. Okay. Deep breaths. This is what's best, Sora. Time to save Monarch. Oh, I've got my whacking stick, Sora. Let's have a word with him. Yeah, that's how Pugman has conversation. Captain, you must be back with the access codes to our new ship. Graham, we need to talk. We have work to do. This isn't the time for one of our spats. Um, I'm sorry, Graham, but Zora's taken over. What? Zora? You're running the Iconoclast into the ground, and I don't believe it'll get better after we take Stellar Bay. The troops take orders from me already, and you've... You've brought me as far as you can down the eternal path. It's time to step down. The troops. Listen to you. This isn't an army. They aren't soldiers. They're believers. Followers. They pick up a gun because you tell them to, not because they want to. And you, Captain, after all you've done for me, for us, you throw behind this mutinous blasphemer? Well, uh, you sabotaged your people. Let's get on with it, Sora. Yeah, I... Yeah. Let's. I'm sorry. I believed in you once. I did. But it's over. Stand down. I won't. What happened back then was a mistake, and the colony has moved on. This is my movement. These are my people. If you want to lead them, you'll have to kill me. Yeah. What are you going to do, Pug? Um, let's see if it's necessary. That That isn't necessary. Please, don't make me do this, Graham. If this is where my path ends, I accept it. But as long as I draw breath, I will not abandon them. So be it. Here they come! Take them! That had to be done, people. Oh. And I quite enjoyed it, to be honest. That was just one swing. You're looting him still in slow mo before yeah, he's I hit am. the ground. Now that was fun! <laughs> yeah, it was, wasn't it? <laughs> I enjoyed it. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> I get dips on the loot. 
Leader armor pug. No, let's have a quick peek. The boards vastly overestimates their authority and grasp on power. Without the earth, the directorate's military might to back them up. They would not be able to maintain their life-draining grip on the colony's throats. They spread lies and misinformation to confuse and repress the masses. Perhaps that's one of the reasons they have not allowed any colony ships since the Hope's disappearance. They've had 70 years to condition their good little workers to follow their directives unquestionably. Their lies become more and more transparent as their years pass and will soon be too obvious for even the most deluded colonists to see. Um, dangers of corporate society. I hope to someday publish a greater work in which I can more expansively lay out what is so clear to me that our society's obsession with a corporate run life has stifled and crippled humanity's ability to grow? Alas, for now, I can only collect my scattered thoughts into this barely functional machine. In my younger and more vulnerable days, I bought into the attraction of a corporate ladder, a measured, quad quantifiable way with which to judge oneself against one's peers. It provided motivation, meaning. Yet in this, my spirit long yet my spirit longed for more than just a paycheck. It yearned to reach out and connect with my fellow man. It sought a connection, it sought kin, it sought a familiar unit. The corporations claim that they are familiar familial unit, but they treat us like pets. We beg for scraps at the table, and if they are so kind as to drop one, we pr praise the ground that they tread on, while they usher us into kennels called homes. We attach ourselves to contractually obligated f uh, familial units, strangers to whom we share no more connection than the employees seeking to empower themselves by our unions. We bear children out of obligation to our executives who demand a constant workforce. Squad. Yeah. We slave away in the vain hope that someday we too will be like those executives until the day we die and are processed, burned and filed away as another tick on the human resource paperwork. I have to agree, what a waste of a life. Mm -hmm. We have built ourselves into a cold, unthinking, efficient machine and in doing so have abandoned all warmth humanity is capable of. I weep for all, us all. It's well written. Uh, Sanjay, Sanjay and the portrayal of his truth. This is sad music, Pug. Almost like we've made the wrong decision. I think it was the best one. It's the one... Everybody had an option. He wanted to die. I often recall... He, just, he didn't want to give up his power. Well, he thought that he was leading his people in a better direction away from the board. Oh, well, why are you making me feel guilty now, Chip Pants? I've smashed his brains in. It's done. <laughs> I can't put it back in his head. You can, but I don't know if it would work the same. I often recall my former friend who once sought to dismantle the corporations, as I still do. When he took ownership of the corporation, I held him in such contempt. I called him a coward, a betrayer. He was becoming the very thing we hated. Now I'm not so sure. Recently I've come to accept that his heart was more close than mine. I cannot expect every man to be able to open himself to the eternal truth as I have. Some are just not capable. As, And so it is a tragic thing, tragic that he's weaker than I hoped, that he cannot fight for a cause I can empathise with tragedy. Should the day come when the metal of our spirits clash against one another, that empathy will shield me from guilt, like the board. He now stands across our path, armed, crossed, stubbornly, resist, resistant to the eternal truth, like the board. He spreads, nay, celebrates the poison that cripples our society, like the board. His stubbornness will only blind him to the inevitable fall. Tragic. That's what he had to say about Sanjir. Hmm. In the universe. Influence Drift. If you want to read that, friends, you can pause the video. Last line. 
If we can shout so loudly that the truth inches its way into the collective consciousness, I am confident it will spread to the rest of the cosmos. Suppression of the truth. It's very difficult to face the eternal truth that everything happens for a reason, that life and everything in it is the will of the cosmic consciousness can be a terrifying one. There is an urge among us all to control the parameters of one's life. This urge is so powerful that it suppresses the eternal truth simply by existing. Mankind has not shed the weight of its own shackles, and so I find that spreading philosophism is unnecessarily difficult. But the universe cannot suppress it forever. Biology changes, creatures adapt and evolve. We overcome our urges for the better of our species. Someday our minds will be born more open to this idea. Until then, I must not abandon hope. Fair point. Regarding Sora. For someone who is so committed to the iconoclast, why way I fear that Sora is slipping off the true path. More and more often I fear her attachment to the materialism of our oppressors sways her decisions more than the search for the guided truth that will save us. She often tells me that our people are hungry. I agree their spirits long for fulfillment, much more powerful power than any pang of an empty gut. I might have made the wrong decision. <laughs> Okay, so about freedom. Of all the things to motivate a person, I'm finding freedom has been the most powerful. Many of them still remember being slaves to the corporate structure, recalling those painful memories lights their fire anew. A man from Fulbrook stopped through on his way to Stella Bay. After thumbing through our pamphlet, he asked me how we can survive without money. I found an appropriate metaphor in a gas mask. In gas masks. When, <laughs> when clearing a mantis warm nest we wear masks to ward off poisonous fumes even after the nest is cleared the fumes may remain for some time thus we wear the mask until we are safe to breathe until the very last dregs of our poisonous corporate corporation society are gone the attachment to bits will remain though they use though they you their use is uncomfortable and though they strife and our spirit, just as they masks are ill-fitting and limit our visions, we must pers persist with them until we can cast them aside. I'd say what, uh, I may have battered these brains in, but I will make sure the corporate... If, if the corporate board are how he's painted them, yeah. I will take them down. Shifting priorities. As our numbers grow, I find that more and more of our population turns to the written word of my pamphlets. I am happy to continue making them, but I must find a more efficient way to print and distribute the reading material. I wonder if that old printing press might be convinced to run once more. We did that. We're printing these pamphlets. Um, all right. What do you think of it, old chipmunks? I think... Did, uh... did we make a mistake? It's hard to say with the information that was given because we found out that he gave codes to the gate to um, to enemies to sabotage, but he could like uh, one of the options popped up that he could have been doing it for another reason. Hmm. Well, Captain, here we are. Killed a lot of people in the name of the iconoclasts, and it never feels right. But this time, it's especially wrong. You've got the... Void held me. I'll never remember what that thing is called. The device from the ship. Do you have it? Uh, hold on, I was thinking you and Sanja could join force, forces. See, she could also influence Sanja. It's to true. To come around. And not be such a beautiful And Sanjar knows uh, the corporate's uh, corporate. <laughs> but I he wants to be it, able to have a leg up on him. I think we're too far gone. Pulling Carlotta's support was crossing a line. Well, I can't do persuade. Uh, neither of you can afford this fight. Monarch is going to devour the victor. 
Your people have suffered long enough. You could put a stop to that. I'm going to use uh, number three intelligence. Mm -hmm. I would have yeah, said. well, we'll die try. Fuck. I sound like Graham. Throwing lives at a problem. We've lost a hell of a lot to this fight. Graham would never agree to this, but... I'm starting to realize how often he led us astray. All right. If he's willing to talk, I'll give him a chance. I've already spoken to him. He's agreed to me. Well, then. I've got to prepare a few just-in-case measures. But when you're ready, let's meet at the old OSI church outside Stellar Bay. All right, so... Well, maybe we can find balance between the two. We can meet, meet in the middle. And everybody's happy. How about that? Uh, I like that. Oh, and I think you can take those mag picks now on the floor. Chip hats, it says steel chip hats. Although, who would say? Boom, Bam. gone. <laughs> and, well, she can keep that crap. <laughs> okay, she wants us to meet somewhere? You're going to go and supervise the negotiation now, Pug. Oh, that's going to be good. I've got my whacking stick. Feel it's it. well written. I overheard you listening it is well about. written, yeah. You a fan? Am I There's a no fan? clear... She asks. Bad guys, there's no clear the good guys. Won the Kale crown. Right. Explain something to me. Oh, what right, the hell go. is the point of the six pack? Oh, it's easy. See the six Don't pack kill anybody the Oh, this looks back. cool. Hey, thanks for coming. I wish I'd had more time to prepare a proper analysis on the costs and benefits of your proposed union, but uh, I suppose we'll have to improvise. Less spirit. Gotta admit, I really thought I was walking into a trap here. I'm ready. If it were, I wouldn't be standing here all vulnerable-like. Sanja, Stellar Bay's got food and walls. And my people need both. If you'll have us, we're willing to share the space. Do you have any idea what that would cost? Why, drawing up the budget alone is going to take weeks. Let's have a look. What about, what if the iconoclast uh, just supported your supply lines? What do you think, Chipettes? Yeah, I think so. And then I Not want a paycheck. I need to move a fair amount of my people into the city. We need shelter, Captain. Okay. Uh, I think the top one. Yeah. I'm not saying live outside, just help out in the wilderness once in a while. Suppose some of our healthier folk could offer aid. Some of us need to stay in the city proper, though. Well, I'll be damned. If you two can work together, maybe there's some hope for this place after all. Truly? A compromise? I'm not sure I'd ever have heard as much from Graham. Graham was a murderous fiend. And I'd be shocked if you didn't already know that. Careful, Sora. Graham was Sanjar's friend. His friend? No, His Jesus. friend? Are you fucking kidding me, Captain? I've been standing with Graham for the better part of a decade while this paperclip cowboy sat behind his walls. This feels like one of those times when everyone at headquarters but me is laughing at something, but you two aren't laughing. Amber Heights, you hallhead. Ten years ago, Graham had all those people killed. What? We're losing emotion That's here. That's not possible. Even for him. That's going too far. I've gone and put my foot in it, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> You're missing the big picture for the details again, right? Or if you want to tell him what Graham did, that's number one. It's kind yeah, of okay. Number one, it is. We found correspondence between him and the pirates. But that means I had no idea, I swear. Look, we were both fed up with corporate leadership, but I, I never guessed he'd do something like that. Mr. Nandi says he don't know a thing. I say we take his word for it. You can't take bureaucrats at their word. You back someone into a corner like this, and they'll say anything to get out of it. Hmm. Um. This is, uh, if you think that Sanjar knew about it and is lying, that's number two. But if you think Zor is just overreacting, number one. I don't think Sanjar knew about it. Yeah, I don't either. Take it back a notch. I... Okay, okay. 
You're right. Sorry. It'll take me a while to get over losing Graham. You know, I felt the same way years ago, when he first left. There was something magnetic about him that lets you ignore the things you didn't want to see. But surely you know what that's like. Yeah, I... I do. Okay, if you're willing to house and supply some of us, I'll have our more capable soldiers help out. There you go. Okay, now hug it out. Aww. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'll need to sign a physical contact waiver first. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming out, Sanjar. I, uh, guess I'll see you at Stellar Bay. Never doubted you for a minute, boss. Those there physical contact waivers probably aren't far no. off. But... <laughs> we should feel proud of ourselves, friends. We, uh, we made pace and we only clapped one person around the head for it. Mm-hmm. All right, let's, um... Well done. You think Sneak and Hack? Yeah, let's get them at least up to... At least to their next levels, because Hack, we use it almost everything. Okay. Perks... That one, Pug. That's going to help your loot. Yeah, that would speed things up a bit. Okay. Alright, friends, I think we're going to leave it well, after we load. <laughs> <laughs> but dare I say it, I think you're ready to get off this planet, Pug. Am I looting a church, in fact? Have you I, might have be. Have I got that light? Ooh, oh, a look, hat! Look at him! Isn't that fancy? I hope huh. you get to wear that. You don't feel bad about wearing a skeleton's hat, do you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I suppose not. At least I know it won't have lice. <laughs> oh, you also completed that task, Pug. You just need to talk to his mama. Whose mama? That mama. Right, the one they were already on. Oh, yeah. Okay, completely forgot about that. We'll do that in a second. Persuade a second. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, it should be around here somewhere then. Where is it? Over here? Right there. You just passed her. Hey, Felix. They're chatting. I tried your recipe, oh. you know. You tried How my Rizzo's Purpleberry Candy Vodka? Be honest. Great. Oh, Captain, you did it! My little boy is back safe and sound. Tell the Captain how grateful we are, Tuck Tuck. <laughs> Mama, I told you that I'm not staying. <laughs> I just came back to talk to you about why I left. Then I'm going back to Amber Heights. Oh, we'll get that silliness sorted out. You're safe here with me, and that's how it's going to stay. Isn't that right? She's crazy. <laughs> you mentioned a reward for bringing Tucker home. I did, didn't I? Suppose I can't expect you to just be content at a good deed done. No? Nope. Well, all right. Here, kind stranger. This is every bit I've scrimped and scraped for years to save. Oh, I feel bad now. But it's nope, more I don't worth give it to, to me. have my tuck tuck home safe again. Uh, good luck to you both. Bo. Oh. He doesn't look too happy to don't be Don't worry about me, Captain. Mama and I'll work this out. Good. Alright. Now, while we're here, where is. Let's speak to Celia. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? Sebastian. Not yet. Call your jets. Uh, where is Sebastian? Flowers for Sebastian. This must be it. Aww. I don't even know who he is. Let's go play Cupid, though. Well, he's just beyond us. It's just right here. <laughs> okay. Hello, stranger. Can I interest you in a raptodon tongue? No. Or maybe some toenails? Can toenails? You look like a man who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts. Sebastian, you ever get your hands on those pheromone sacks? Manipillers ain't gonna hunt themselves, you know. I must have hunted a dozen. But I couldn't find a single sack on any of them. I must be looking in the wrong place. 
You found some sex? <laughs> Man of Pillars ain't got pheromone sex. I just told him that so he'd stop asking me for advice. At least I'm getting a good haul of claws in the process. You're in good hands, traveling with Monarch's top merc. Still, if you want any rat glands or manti claws, I've got you covered. Dirty get. He seems to get all the skank off the animals and collect it. And now he's looking for their sex. Uh, let's talk about Celia. Huh. I haven't seen her in a few days. But I've been meaning to ask her how that raptid on acid is working out. I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. Would you consider going on a date with her? No, 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 no. Oh, really, Chip Pants? Is that, is that's not what you do, is you it, Paper? Oh, okay. It. She <laughs> likes you. Nice of you to say. I like her too. Now, what do we say, Chip Pants? Number two. No, I mean, she really likes you. Wink, wink. And I gotta admire anyone with her passion for canid hides. Ugh. But you don't have to butter me up. Which one, Chip Pants? <laughs> I, I say number two. You're just, an idiot. Yeah, just I'm trying it. to tell you she wants a date with you. Wait, I see what's going on. She put you up to this so she could get a discount, hmm? <laughs> don't get me wrong. Fun. I'd like to give her a discount. She's a real fine lady. Always talks nice and slow, so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit. On account of no one else having any use for raptodon tongues. <sighs> you gonna bribe him? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't want a discount. She's attracted to you. No. -uh. A lot of people think oh. I'm not too bright, but you're not fooling me. I know she can't get these goods anywhere else. Persuade them. Yeah, that's a good one. Don't take my word for it. Spend some time with her. I promise she won't ask for a discount. You sound pretty sure. And she is awful nice. Okay, I'll do it. Once her shift ends, we'll go someplace nice. Maybe to Chef Raymond's. There you go. All right. Let's have a word of uh, say what's happened. Dummy. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? Well, I don't know what, what she sees in the idiot. <laughs> uh, he said he'll go on a date with you. Okay. But how did he say it? Did he sound excited? <laughs> or like he was just agreeing to it? Was he like... Yay, a date with Celia. I've secretly been waiting for this. Or was it more? <laughs> sure, I don't have anything else going on. What do we say, Chip Pants, in a situation like this? Do we um, make it up or just tell it how it is? <laughs> um, I'd say don't overthink it, number two. Really? What about this one? Just don't ask him for any discounts. That's <laughs> That's practical. I don't think she wanted that junk to begin with. She just bought it to to have something to chat with him about. So, she, yeah. But she still shouldn't ask for any discounts, I don't think. <laughs> he likes you, Celia. Not to worry. If I never buy another Raptodon tongue, it'll be too soon. Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do, and Mr. Nandi's giving me that back-to-work look. Anyhow, thank you. Oh, she gave oh, me 300 bucks for that. Alright, let's get on with it. We're going to head back to the ship. We'll speak to old Phineas. Alright, friends. On the next video, we're going to speak to old Phineas. Until then, well, you guys take care. See you in a bit. Bye-bye. Save and quit. <laughs>